Hey, hello! This is Professor Game, where we interview successful practitioners of games, gamification, and game thinking, who bring us the best of their experiences to get ideas, insights, and inspiration to help us in the process of getting students to learn what we teach. And I'm Rob Alvarez. I work at IE Business School Publishing, where we create interactive and engaging learning materials. Well, hello and welcome, Engagers. Today, we have somebody very, very special, and we're going to have a special episode. It's going to be different because today we're going to be talking about a conference, and the conference is Gamification Europe. And who are we going to be talking with? No less than Pete Jenkins. Pete, are you ready to engage? Always. Pete. Pete is an international speaker, advisor, and trainer in gamification. He took the number one spot in the Gamification Gurus Power 100 in 2016. He has also founded the company Gamification Plus in 2000, and has since advised and trained companies of all sizes, both in the UK and internationally, on the use of gamification. He's a chair of the GAMFED, which is the International Gamification Confederation, where he helps spread the use of gamification best practices to benefit as many people and businesses as possible. He has been the entrepreneur in residence in the University of Brighton for nine years and is researching gamification for HR. He lectures on gamification and entrepreneurship. And he's also a practice director at the gamification at IntelliStream Inc. in Chicago, US. Uh, he's a strategic advisory company. It's a strategic advisory company in the CRM space. And over the past 15 years, he has built and sold two businesses, one in security software and the recent one in telecoms and internet connectivity business. He's also the ambassador for Brighton and Huff Chamber of Commerce. So, Pete, let's get started and let's get a small warm up here. How did, and why did you get started in the gamification space? How and why? Um, <clears throat> for a long time, I ran an IT company. Uh, particularly specializing in customer relationship management systems, big, complicated systems. and uh, <laughs> Big and useful, no? Big and useful, but I got fed up with watching people not use all the features they'd bought, hmm. which, uh, well, I, for one thing, it's slightly annoying. For another, that means they're less likely to stay as a customer for longer. <laughs> so I thought, surely there's a better way. <clears throat> and I did see some research from Gartner, which in, I think it was 2002, they said, uh, oh, 70 something percent of all game of all CRM projects fail. And I was like, okay. And then in 2012, they did the research again, and the figure was pretty much the same, <laughs> <laughs> even though all the CRMs had advanced quite a lot in that time. And that made me think it was down to the users rather than the software. Hmm. So I was, I went looking for uh, a better way to do it. I thought it might be just like better design or user experience. And I saw the Coursera course by Kevin Wehrbach on gamification and dived into that in February 2013 and I've never looked back since. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. We're all excited about gamification and that's that's a good reason to be in gamification Europe. So the next question is after you went into gamification, you've been successfully going through with gamification plus, the GAMFED and many other exciting things in your life around gamification, but why, what motivated you to create gamification Europe? Uh, well, honestly, I was thinking about creating a conference uh, just for the UK, uh, which I was going to run in the spring next year. <laughs> uh, but about a month and a half ago, for quite a few weeks in a row, lots of people were constantly contacting me, asking me, what's happening with Gamification World Congress this year? <laughs> uh, which is a great conference that has run for like five or six years or something yeah. now. Um, and I managed to get hold of them and I was like, is it happening? And they were like, no, we're so so busy that we're not going to be able to do it this year. And I thought, well, to be honest, particularly with my GAMFED hat on, that uh, we really, which is all about the gamification community, yeah. that we really needed a big conference this year in 2017. So what I've actually done is at really quite short notice, try and put on a similar big two-day event for us all to come and share uh, stories and what we've learned over the past year mm. about gamification and its use and where it's working, where it's not scratching your own itch isn't it yeah well it is i'm kind of putting on the conference with all the speakers that i want to hear <laughs> that's the good thing about running your own conference isn't it <laughs> it's one of the, of the of the perks that you get from the whole hassle you i'm sure you're, you're getting into for for organizing it yeah it's it's a big project 
<laughs> <laughs> so first thing, um, Pete, I do want to thank you for organizing a, a massive conference around gamification in Europe, because it's true. I, I was one of the guys I've probably spent like six months every once in a while asking in Twitter to get Gammy World Con, I think is the Twitter handle. Yeah. Um, what about Gamification World Congress this year? Is it happening? Is it not happening? And of course, I mean, I know they're super busy. I know the conference has had a toll on their on their schedules and, and others. But I was really, really excited. Last year was my first time in, in GWC and I couldn't be more excited. Meeting people like you, um, like many other gurus in, in the gamification space. And uh, I was thrilled as well. I live in Madrid. <laughs> having it at least in Spain was extremely comfortable, but that doesn't mean having it nearby in Brighton is not a good idea. So, uh, Pete, my, I also had a question of um, what, can, what can we expect? What can the, the listeners of this podcast expect to find uh, the conference at Gamification Europe? At the conference? Well, well <laughs> at this conference, of course. Yeah, yeah. So basically... Some of the best speakers and practitioners of gamification from around the world. Some of them are going to give us talks. A few are going to give us some hands-on workshops so we can actually uh, experience what we're talking about. There's going to be quite a lot of uh, chances to network as well. I've built in some good, some good uh, long breaks inspired by the Spanish. We have a long lunch. <laughs> well, I, uh, I live. In, I'm not Spanish. I just live in Spain, <laughs> but that's one of the quirks here. Yeah, for sure. It is. Well, you know, I, I speak at a lot of conferences worldwide, and I'm trying to choose and select the best features, as far as I'm concerned, from all the ones I've been to. <laughs> that's and, and actually, cool. GWC is one of those that I really enjoy. How they do it, the energy that goes into it. Yeah. Um, uh, I, if there was one thing I wanted to add, it was more networking. Hmm. So we've got long breaks, long lunches, a big networking dinner for all the attendees in the evening. Hmm. And uh, you're probably the first to know that we're also going to run some Gamification Europe awards. Wow, as well. that's so cool. Okay, which we'll give out over those uh, over that dinner. Hmm. All the information about that should hopefully go live next week. Uh, so we're recording this uh, in the first week of October. You're probably going to listen so to it a bit later, but you will find it in <laughs> in the webpage for sure. If I think about it, you'll be unable to submit by the time you hear this, but you will be able to probably vote for the uh, best projects and things. Mm. Sounds great. <laughs> it gives us a chance to participate. Um, yeah. Pete, I have a complete bias towards education. So... I want to ask, is there a track, several talks or speakers that are around the education or at least the learning community? Um, so I've tried not to have too many in education, <laughs> although there are quite a few in learning. Um, and there's a little part of me that says I might run a small one day conference next year just for the academic world, hmm. particularly around uh, education and how gamification is being used in that. <clears throat> and because this is very much more, I think, towards the a for the gamification community to, to network and meet and catch up but also for businesses and corporates and yeah to work out how best to use it however that being said <laughs> there are some great talks um so we've got uh, sylvester arnab from uh, yeah. coventry university and he has the who's coming to... project as well no yeah he's got a few and game changers yeah so he's coming to talk about um Actually, his talk title is Don't Just Use Gamification, Think Hybrid Solutions. Hmm. Uh, and it's very much around what do you need to add to gamification to make it work? And what have they learned? Because they've been doing stuff there for the beginning and so on for three years, I think now. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, we've got a few others. We've got, uh, we've got a big workshop, which is basically running as an escape room. And what you can use to learn from that, the person running that, does uh, escape rooms for well companies like Sainsbury's things like that. Hmm. So we're going to experience what it is to be in an escape room, and then look at what you learned from that afterwards, which I think would be really good fun. And I think the trouble there will be trying will be what will the trouble? Be? The trouble will be we can't fit everyone in that one, <laughs> so there'll be another really work running at the same time. Yeah, for sure. It ties you away from it. Um, I, I, you mentioned Sylvester and the the yeah. escape room, and I I do remember last year I was in Alina Duca Berlin, and I saw his team running an escape room, and they, it was an interesting initiative because what they did was they ran it several times during the day, 
So, I mean, of course, you still have to sign up and there were a few spots, but I was lucky enough to get one of them. And, and so they had just a room that was basically dedicated to the escape room. Yeah, whereas I've challenged them to actually come up with something where probably 150 people can somehow experience an escape room at the same time. Wow, that would be amazing. Yeah, uh, and they've decided to rise to the challenge. So I can't wait to experience that one. <laughs> For sure. We've got some more, actually. We've got a really good talk title, How Not to Run a Gamified Classroom. Which I'm really looking forward to. <laughs> uh, speakers out from Mexico for that one. Could that be and we've got, Bernardo? Oh, that's right. Yes. I met him at GWC last year. He's an amazing, he's super energetic. Yeah, I think it'll be a great talk as well for that reason. <laughs> we've also got Horst Streck, who's chair of the Dutch Games Association. He's coming to talk about a project they've been working on called Protoplay, hmm. uh, which is for higher education. It's kind of, uh, they've run a whole, designed a run, basically a whole mini. I'm going to call it a mini degree, but I think in the UK we'd call it a foundation level. So it's like a pre-university hmm. uh, course, and the whole thing's been gamified. Good stuff. Um, and we've definitely got uh, another one from uh, uh, Roberto from <laughs> IE Business School. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon yours will be educational. Yes, for sure. It's a project around education and how it failed. <laughs> Well, initially of failed, of course. It would be remiss of me not to mention that our guru, Anne Coppens, who's going to be talking about what they've learned, what she's learned from uh, running lots of learning projects. Hmm. Yeah, she does a lot around, especially for, for companies. Yeah, she's great about that. Yeah. Oh, and uh, I'm quite looking forward to it. We've got Professor Karen Cham. She's from the University of Brighton. Hmm. So, she's contributed to a, a really cool gamification textbook, sort of kind of aimed at uh, post-grad level and about analyzing the gamification industry. Hmm. And she's going to do us a talk on the biggest risks for the whole gamification industry. Wow. And how, um, well, what is the title? Hang on, let me just look it up because it's quite cool. When gamification methodology becomes mythologized. Hmm. Yeah. Enticing. And uh, I think it is exciting, and it's kind of this is kind of my theme for the conference is a hero's journey and the obstacles we overcome, and I've got two talks which are basically like um, questioning the purpose of the conference and the theme. And this this particular talk by Karen is questioning the purpose of gamification, and uh, so I'm up for the risk, and I put it before a break so that we can all discuss and shout at each other afterwards. Mm. Some and my there. main. Yeah, my main keynote speaker is Jeff Gomez, who's really cool from the US, who does a lot of work on very big projects um, around uh, cross-platform storytelling, really. What, how do you sell the, tell the parts of the same story across multiple different platforms to, to really get, build engagement? But he's basically going to come and tell us that the hero's journey is just not good enough anymore. Hmm. And what's next? Wow, and, uh, wow. So I'm going to start with like, my conference theme is a hero's journey. Uh, and our first speaker is going to tell us that's a rubbish idea. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can tell you come from the academic world. You're challenging the assumptions. Yeah, challenging the assumptions. So I do like a bit of stirring things up as well. Yeah, sounds awesome. So engagers, um, I'm sure now you're a lot more, even more excited about gamification in Europe. As you know, our topic will be like quite at the center of the conference in quite a few things. And several several talks will be talking about precisely what you're interested in education and how gamification is helping or not game uh, the, the experience in education so so again <laughs> i i am really excited about going to to gamification europe and i hope you are engagers so we'll be looking forward to see you there um the the other question i had well i i was going to ask you who will be at gamification europe but you have a very comprehensive list already of very exciting people who will be there and the next question I had was precisely about the th main theme of the topic. How, oh, yeah. and especially why, did you choose that? Why do you think it's relevant? Uh, there's a couple of reasons I think it's relevant, which is why I liked it as a theme. One is, I think the best learning is quite often learning from mistakes. And I was, and I, what I was thinking about doing was a, a conference basically with the theme of failure. And then I realized that in some countries, it's difficult to get budget from people to send you yeah. to a conference about failure. <laughs> I thought, how can I sneak that in 
And I thought, ah, a hero's journey is all about overcoming the obstacles, i.e. learning from failure. Yeah. So I, I've turned it into a different uh, way of looking at the same problem. And the other reason is I don't think story and narrative gets talked about enough in in, in gamification. And it is, it seems to me, one of the key things in making a really successful gamification project, whatever it is, is the strength of the story. Hmm. So I really wanted a hero's journey as a theme to encourage people to come and do talks about narrative and story. We've got a great talk from Melinda Jacobs of Subatomic called Game Mechanics Suck Without <laughs> Narrative. So I just, just can't wait for it. Um, I, I, every time I hear talk about narrative, I, I always remember Monica Cornetti, who's like an absolute super fan of, of introducing the storytelling into her, into her solutions for learning. So yeah, it's, and I completely agree. I mean, without the narrative, without a theme, without something that ties it all together, it's, it's hard to get real gamification going. So yeah, I couldn't agree more. I wasn't challenging this time the assumption, but it's absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure we're going to have an absolute blast over there. And We will. I couldn't get Monica. She was already busy that week. Yeah. And when she asked to move her other work, her other client said, not only can you not move it, I'm going to give you an extra keynote <laughs> so that you really don't want to avoid my week. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. But uh, Pete, why Brighton of all the places you could have chosen in Europe? Okay, well, that's actually really easy. That's where I'm based. <laughs> Comfort is the reason. Yeah, I thought, I thought if I'm going to run a big conference, one of the things I can do to minimize uh, the difficulties, particularly in finding venues and working out how it's all going to work, is the first year, put it on in Brighton. Hmm. And I'm actually quite keen on the idea of moving it around Europe in future years. Wow. We've already had a request to run it in Amsterdam next year. In fact, that's from... Uh, Mikael, who's running the Escape Room project, so they're willing to help do that. So I think a conference called Gamification Europe should move around Europe, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. The other reason mm -hmm. is actually there's a big... It, Brighton is a conference city, as it happens. Hmm. Um, so there's quite a lot of uh, venues and conferences on. And one that we have during the summer is called Develop, which is a big game developers conference. Oh. And so I've actually partnered with the event organizers for that conference to organize it. Um, so, uh, please, what do we do in gamification? We learn from the success of the games world. Absolutely. Don't we? Absolutely. Yeah, so it's given me uh, a slightly more interesting reach in terms of speakers and people that would come along. And also, we should have some really interesting people in the exhibition area. We've got a really big exhibition area for people to come and show off their software, their solutions, their platforms, whatever they want to do. Um, which would be really good cool, because you have to, in fact, we'll be funneling people through that area in order to get to the talks. Awesome, awesome. So is there, really is there any gamification of the conference? There will be. We're working on that. Mm. The no, no spoilers. That's cool. <laughs> no spoilers on that one. At the moment. <laughs> great. Awesome. There's, there's, my issue there is there's so many great platforms and apps to choose from. Hmm. <laughs> we're actually like, which one are we going to use? Yeah, that's true. And then, and then we're like, can we get them to sponsor? Yeah, <laughs> can, can can that person get interested enough to sponsor? Yeah, and you have I mean the the challenge of of organizing this in a short notice is is something to be reckoned and again to be to be thankful for somebody like you to take up to this challenge. I mean I'm um, I'm sure that ha had you had a, a full year to to organize you would have been more relaxed and you probably would have had more time to plan calmly. But of course now you have to make everything and make it work. Because I'm sure that with the great work that you guys always do, um, this is going to be amazing. So, so I mean, it's a big challenge, and that's that's awesome as well. It is. <laughs> it is a big challenge. Stop reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's exciting. That's the reason. That's another reason for it to be even more exciting. So, it is. I've been telling people actually, Brighton is like the Barcelona of the UK. Mm. It is a really cool place. It's, it's, it's why I live here. Never been We've there, but two universities. looking forward very much We've... to be there. A couple of days. Because we've got two universities, we've got a, a really big, um, a really good party town as well. It's historically been a tourist destination, and we've actually got a really thriving uh, community of in a couple of areas. There's a games development community which is really strong here, and also the e-learning. Uh, half of the UK's big e-learning companies are all based in Brighton. Wow! So there's some interesting gamification stuff. I went to, uh, I went to one of them earlier this week. 
I went to Brightwave, who were showing off some uh, augmented reality training f for bar people, which was really quite interesting. Wow. So, uh, so we're, we're I'm getting... I'm trying to some of them along to show us what they're doing. We're, we're getting a lot of geography of Brighton classes here. That's amazing. I've, I'm, I'm very... Ex I'm every t Everything you mention, I get more excited about getting to meet Brighton in itself. I haven't, I haven't even begun to talk about this fun stuff. We've got a vertical pier that's new this year, which is called the I360 from the people who did the London Eye. Hmm. And um, I don't know if the weather's going to be good enough for it because it's the end of November, but we've got a giant <laughs> zip wire along the seafront as well this year <laughs> wow wow something good fun as well as a pier and other things you know the usual tourist resort yeah fun stuff for sure pete i'm going to get a bit more traditional in the sense of professor game and i'm going to make you a few of the questions that we always typically make our guests it's just going to be a few because i do want to make sure that you come back at some point so that we make you the full regular <laughs> interview but I didn't want to pass by this chance of inviting the engagers to participate in something that I'm sure will be an amazing conference um, that will happen in November. It's, uh, correct me if I'm saying the dates wrong, 28th and 29th of November. Is that right? That's perfect. Yeah. It will be happening in Brighton. Um, once again, the nearest airport I've been researching is London Gatwick, Gatwick right? Yeah. Yeah, it's only about 25 minutes on the train. It's closer to get to Brighton than it is to London. Hmm. So. Yeah, I saw it on the map. It looked halfway, but of course, I'm sure you know a lot better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> I fly from there a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. So it's very near to, to Brighton. And what else can you say about the conference? Is there any other details before we dig into our regular questions? Any other details? Gosh. Oh, the web page. the night before. If you arrive the night before, I think the gorillas are on in the local conference set in the local um, stadium if you want to go to a gig we'll also have networking drinks in the hotel we've got a big uh, dinner and awards on the evening of the first night and we'll have an after conference party on the uh, at the end of the second night that's something else i picked up from spain <laughs> <laughs> very good very nice so um do, uh, i'm not sure if you mentioned it but the web page where we can get any more information on gamification europe I have not. It's gamification-europe.com. Okay, so go ahead and dash directly there if you haven't already and get your information. If you haven't already, get your tickets as well. And please join us in Gamification Europe. Um, Pete? Thank you, Rob. I would like to ask you, who would you like to have interviewed here in Professor Game? See, I'm always thinking about that. And actually... I think it would be someone from just outside the industry, someone who relates, uh, but we don't necessarily think of. So I was thinking someone like uh, Dan Ariely. Okay. Yeah, who um, did the great book, The Upside of Irrationality. So there's a bit of like behavioral economics. Yeah. Some, yeah. Yeah. That would be the one that springs to mind. I think he's a great speaker, and I'd love to know what they're working on now, you know, the latest thinking. Hmm. Actually, it sounds pretty amazing. I'm going to try and get a hold of him. Cool. <laughs> Definitely do. <laughs> the next question, Pete. And uh, yeah. I, can I can tell you some of the people I've been requested to get for the conference that are ridiculously difficult to get a hold of, so particularly at short notice, are people like Nia Ayal. Yes. And um, I, I really wanted to get Jesse Shell to the conference hmm. as well. I have a friend who works at, at Shell. Well, a friend. She, she's a fellow engineer. I started engineering. Um, and she's, I, I found out recently that she works at Shell Games and it was like, wow, wow, I know somebody who works in there. So <laughs> I'm not going to say it's well, a contact. Come to you but, when yeah. I was it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm sure he, he would be amazing and hopefully we'll, we'll have a chance to, to have him next year, right? Yeah, absolutely. Especially when I can prove what a brilliant success the first year was. <laughs> absolutely. So I'm going to make you a question that comes, it's a random question. I pick it up right now. And of course, it was curated previously so that nothing weird comes up. But the question is, um, it's, ha it's expressed in two sentences. So which design okay. elements do you think take priority over other? Or said another way, are there design fundamentals that matter, mo matter to most experiences with, without which the experience doesn't work? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we, we, uh, you know, we might have a talk answer. around that uh, in, in yeah. Gamification Euro, right? Yeah, I, I, 
I get asked a similar question a lot, which is like, if you if you could pick like one game mechanic, which one would it be? You know, what, what's the most important one? And, and I, all I can ever say is actually, it really depends on the audience, the people you're trying to motivate or change their behaviours on. Because without that bit of research about what they want and what they're motivated by, I completely you're never going to pick the right design element. I completely agree. So the design element would be to actually think of your audience, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, if I picked one, I could probably pick one, actually, which is something we do in every gamification project. Okay. Which is actually just rewording some of the existing things, because normally we're, we're adding gamification to an existing process. It's rewording things to tell people why we want them to do stuff, hmm. to tell them the purpose of things. So even if it's like, we want you to click this button, we're going to tell you why we want you to click this button, because it means you'll be able to then do something else. And sometimes we re reword things so they sound more like a challenge rather than just, we want you to do this thing. So I, I think some of the simplest gamification you can do is just changing the words you're already using. Yeah, that's amazing. It's actually a very, very, very good advice. So that was the next question that I was going to ask you is some quick advice for those <laughs> who have never engaged using gamification in learning. But I guess that covers the answer unless you want to jump in and say something. And oh, that's something another else. one. Right. Yeah, please. Um, I always think you should start small and experiment a lot and try things out. That's the best way to learn what's going to work, I think. But I, I also think that putting some effort into designing it really makes whatever you're doing more engaging. Um, from the first part of your answer, I can tell that you're an entrepreneurship professor for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. I have to say that as well. But yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. Thinking things thoroughly and also testing a lot is is absolutely one of the best practices we can ever name. So Pete, thank you very much for coming into the show with a short notice and for talking about Gamification Europe. And I have to thank you again for organizing such an amazing conference that I'm sure we're going to experience very soon. And the last thing is, thank you very much. Pete, how can we connect with you? Either social media, your email, a web page, whatever you want. Uh, a good place to start with me is Twitter. I'm at Pete Jenkins, quite simple. Um, I do like to connect to people on LinkedIn, although I have to admit, mostly I can connect to people I've actually met in person or done some work with. Hmm. So it's always worth telling me why you want to connect. <laughs> That's a good practice for LinkedIn. I mean, I, I do get requests and I ask like, oh, do, do I know you or are you adding me for some reason? Can you at least tell me in advance? <laughs> So yeah, I, I, I yeah. Well, my, my biggest issue there is is obviously when you're doing a lot of talks and running a lot of training courses as well, you meet a lot of people yeah. who think they know you very well. You know, especially if you've just been teaching them for a whole day, yeah. <laughs> and there's 150 people in the room. I do not know them all. <laughs> and they're gonna go. I mean, even after after giving a course uh, over a week, I'm sure 150 people getting to know them is is a challenge for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, yesterday was the for me was the first day of the, the new term at the university because I work part time teaching gamification and entrepreneurship. And across this year, I'm actually teaching first years, second years, third years, and postgraduates. And yesterday, I think I met uh, well, about 180 new students I'm going to be working with across the across the year. Oof. It's going to take me a long time to learn their names, if, if at all. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck on that one. I'm sure you'll manage. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Pete, again, and we'll see you very soon. And that's game over for now. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Rob. Thanks, Pete. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Hey, Engagers. Thank you for listening to Professor Game Podcast. If you want more interviews with incredible guests like Pete Jenkins and lots of awesomeness from Professor Game, take a minute, subscribe, and rate this podcast on iTunes, where you can find a direct link on, link on professorgame.com slash iTunes. Why iTunes? Because this will help us reach other engagers who will be our allies to make education amazing with gamification. And by the way, if you like the show and want a free gift, then subscribe, give us a five-star rating and a positive review on iTunes, and then send a screenshot where you show this to professor at professorgame.com with review gift in the subject line, and we'll send it to you. Before you click continue to your next mission, would you like to know how Anne Coppins solves the issue of engagement in the prisoner's dilemma using gamification? Well, listen to the next episode of Professor Game. See you there.